Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Western York Region Ontario Health Team Telephone Town Hall. We are live tonight with Mary Agnes Wilson, Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer, and Chief Nursing Executive, Mackenzie Health. In addition, we are joined by thousands of residents from across Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Markham, King City, and other surrounding communities listening in. To ask a question live this evening, simply press 3 on your phone's keypad. Once again, press 3 to ask a question at any, any time over the course of the Town Hall. My name is Eric, and I'll be the moderator of the Town Hall this evening. During this live virtual Town Hall, we encourage you to get involved and to ask questions and give your opinion by voting on a few of our questions. The Western York Region Ontario Health Team chose this format as it is an interactive Town Hall with you, which means we want to hear from you. We want to hear your feedback and opinions and have an open dialogue and discussion with you and fellow residents about how they can better serve and communicate with you about the important health issues that our families and neighbours have today. Tonight our intention is to get as many questions from you as possible. You can ask a question live on the Town Hall by simply pressing 3 on your phone's keypad. At that time someone will take your name and place you in the question queue. Now again, for those people just joining us, hello and welcome to the Western York Region Ontario Health Team Telephone Town Hall. We are live tonight with Mary Agnes Wilson, Executive Vice President, Chief Operating Officer and Chief Nursing Executive, Mackenzie Health. In addition, we are joined by thousands of residents from across Richmond Hill, Vaughan, Markham, King City and other surrounding communities listening in. We want to remind everyone tonight that you can ask a question live by simply pressing 3 on your phone's keypad. Also, we'll be doing a series of survey questions over the course of the Town Hall. You'll be able to use your Touchstone keypad to vote on those questions as they come up. Now, at this time, I'm going to introduce Mackenzie Health's Mary Agnes Wilson so she can open up the Town Hall. Uh, welcome, Mary Agnes. This is a very important telephone town hall. Tonight, we will be discussing the Western York Region Ontario Health Team. Joining you are a number of partners from other organizations that you would like to introduce. And at the moment, it seems we all already have thousands of people joining us on the telephone town hall from throughout York Region, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Mary Agnes, please go ahead. Thank you, Eric. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to the special telephone town hall where we're going to introduce you to the Western York Region Ontario Health Team. We're very happy that you're taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us. I'm here with a number of the partners that make up the Western York Region Ontario Health Team, and we're excited to tell you a little bit about this new healthcare model for our region. And we want to listen to your feedback and opinions so that we can deliver the best care possible to you and your families. Before we start a discussion and explain our vision for this health team, I want to go around the room and introduce our partners to our residents so that you can get to know us. I'd like to start by introducing Christina Bizanz. She's the CEO of CHOPS. She's representing community and home assistance to seniors. Um, I'd also like to introduce you to Helene Lacroix, VP Clinical Innovation at St. Elizabeth Health. She's representing Home Care Services. Elaine Walsh is with us, and she is a board member from Hell House Hospice. She's re representing hospice and palliative services. Uh, partners in this sector also include Hospice Vaughan. Dr. Nick Vidouris is with us this evening. He's a primary care physician at the Thornhill Village Family Health Organization. He's representing primary care. And partners in this sector also include Health First Medical Center, Woodbridge Medical Center Family Health Team, and the Vaughan Community Health Center. And finally, I'd like to introduce you to Joseph Galizia, President and CEO of Universal Care, and Joseph is representing long-term care resident and residential care partners. In this sector, we also include Rena as one of our partners. So Joseph, can you tell us a few words about what an Ontario Health Team is? Yes, with pleasure, Mary Agnes. Good evening to everybody on the call. As organizations delivering health care and social services in York Region, we've had the privilege to have a long-standing relationship with each other as we deliver care that is tailored to the local needs of the communities we serve. The Government of Ontario is introducing Ontario Health Teams as a new way to organize and deliver care that is more connected to patients in their local communities. To give everyone a little bit of a background, in May, the 11 organizations some that were mentioned today, gathered to create the Western York Region Ontario Health Team, and we submitted jointly a readiness assessment to the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care outlining how we plan to focus on the patient experience, 
better coordinate care, and provide a more connected and sustainable public health and social care system that is organized around people's needs and income uh, outcomes. The ministry received over 150 submissions, and in July, we were among the 31 applicants selected to proceed to the full submission, submission stage. This is a huge accomplishment. The next stage of the Ontario Health Team submissions uh, is to provide a full application that is due to the ministry in early October 2019, which the 11 organizations are working collectively and feverishly to uh, make this submission. We hope to be approved as one of the first Ontario health teams in the province so we can help transform health care in Ontario. With that, you can say that in York Region, we're ahead of the game, and this new model provides us with the opportunity to partner even closer together and become leaders in the province as one of the first Ontario health teams. Under the Ontario health team model, all of us collectively will work closer together with each other, coordinate uh, services, no matter where they're provided uh, and care is provided. The Ontario Health Teams will coordinate all care needs for the defined geographic area, which is the Western York Region area. We'll uh, ensure that access care is uh, received when and where you need it, and when you're receiving care, uh, any uh, level of uh, health care, that um, uh, it is seamless and there's better communication and coordination. Providers will know your uh, health history and individual needs and will always be aware of each step of your care plan and where to go when you need it. So with that in mind, uh, it's a distinct pleasure to introduce Christina Bizanz from uh, CHATS, the CEO. Christina, share a few words on the population and the year one focus. Thank you very much, Joseph. When we reflected on the needs of our community as a whole, we felt that we should start our focus to be on providing a continuum of care for frail elderly seniors to help them navigate the different parts of the system. Ultimately, our goal is to help them stay in their homes as long as possible. We chose to begin with seniors as our initial patient population because the data that we received shows that they make up a significant portion of our region's population, some 70,000 people in fact, and require care in high numbers. These are medically and socially complex older adults who may have cognitive, physical, or functional limitations for example, seniors who have chronic health conditions such as heart failure, COPD, diabetes or dementia, and or may have trouble with daily living activities like meal preparation, finding transportation, medication assistance or bathing as a few examples. So the people who need care and who will be the, the initial focus for us will include seniors who are high users of emergency services, hospital inpatient beds, and home and communi community services. They may be seniors who don't receive the right care because they're waiting to transition to more appropriate care and waiting can have very negative impacts on their health as we know. This creates considerable stress for family caregivers who are also left waiting and anxious to see their loved ones in these situations. Many seniors are patients who may no longer require acute care, but are waiting to transition to another, more appropriate health care facility or provider. As we grow to serve the full population in our region, our Ontario Health Team will bring on additional services and providers to meet the needs of our communities. Now, Joseph, I'd like to talk a little bit about how we plan to engage our community. We want to start to uh, develop and introduce the Ontario Health Team model throughout our, to our region, and it becomes increasingly important that we hear directly from our residents. We need to know how we can customize the way we deliver health care and social services locally so that it best serves patients, their families, and caregivers. Patient and family advisors were involved in our initial planning for the first submission, and we'll also be partnering with patients and caregivers in an upcoming workshop to co-design the next phase on how we deliver care and services. And now, we're ready to hear your feedback and learn what matters to you. Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. 
Well, I was just going to say that we have our first uh, a few survey questions that we're going to do with everyone joining us on the line to kick things off. Uh, so if you are using uh, if you're using a touchtone phone, you can indicate your response on the following questions using that phone. And we want to hear from you. On a scale of one to five, to what extent do the health care services you currently receive work together to coordinate care for you as a patient or caregiver? Press 1 if you think your health care services do not work together at all. Press 2 if you think your health care services work together occasionally. Press 3 if you think your health care services work together sometimes. Press 4 if you think your health care services work together regularly. And press 5 if you think your health care services are seamlessly integrated. So again, on a scale of 1 to 5, to what extent do the health care services you currently receive work together to coordinate care for you as a patient or caregiver? Press 1 if you think your health care services do not work together at all. Press 2 if you think your health care services work together occasionally. Press 3 if you think your health care services work together sometimes. Press 4 if you think your health care services work together regularly. And press 5 if you think your health care services are seamlessly integrated. Now we're going to do another polling question in just a moment as we tally up the results of this polling question. So I'm going to, uh, we're going to go to our another polling question right away. So again, using your touchtone phone, you can indicate your response. To what extent are you aware of all the services included in your health plan and the different steps involved in your care? An example of some health services might include home care visits from a nurse or personal support worker, a scheduled visit to your primary care physician or specialist, or enrollment in a community wellness program. Press 1 if you are not aware of the services or steps involved in your health plan. Press 2 if you are aware of one or two of the services and steps involved in your health plan. Press 3 if you are aware of some of the services and steps involved in your health plan. Press 4 if you are aware of most of the services and steps involved in your health plan and press 5 if you are aware of all of the services and steps involved in your health plan. So again, to what extent are you aware of all the services included in your health plan and the different steps involved in your care? An example of some health services might include home care visits from a nurse or personal support worker, a scheduled visit to your primary care physician or specialist, or enrollment in a community wellness program. Press 1 if you are not aware of the services or stepped, uh, steps involved in your health plan, Press 2 if you are aware of one or two of the services and steps involved in your health plan. Press 3 if you are aware of some of the services and steps involved in your health plan. Press 4 if you are aware of most of the services and steps involved in your health plan. And press 5 if you are aware of all of the services and steps involved in your health plan. Now we are going to uh, be taking some live questions in a moment, and I just have an open question for everyone joining us on the line. Um, many patients need and receive a variety of health and community services. This involves moving between different providers and care settings, and often receiving multiple services from different providers at any point in time. For example, a patient may be admitted, uh, sorry, admitted to an inpatient medicine bed at McKenzie Health. Once they are discharged home, they receive a home visit from an SE Health nurse, then have a follow-up visit with a primary care physician. What would be the most helpful to support you in transitioning between your health services as a patient or caregiver? That's one of the questions we have for the audience, and I do want to remind everyone that you can ask a question by pressing 3 on your phone's keypad at any time over the course of the evening, and we are looking for questions related to how Western York Region Ontario health teams can best serve you and your family. So again, the number to press for a live question is three on your phone's keypad if you would like to ask that live question. So we have our first live question coming up, and it's going to be from Todd. Todd, welcome to the town hall. You're joining us live on the line. So please go ahead, Todd, with your question. Okay. My question deals with going to the hospital, McKenzie Health Hospital, and having an absolute abominable waiting period time of seven, eight hours in some cases. I have a mentally challenged brother-in-law that was rushed to the hospital about two weeks ago that sat for seven hours at two o'clock in the morning till he was finally seen it was just in just by a doctor. I have also a daughter who's a past cancer patient who was sat, we took her to the hospital because she wasn't feeling good one night 
she waited eight hours on a gurney in the hallway until finally she was seen by a doctor who didn't have a clue of any information or what to recommend or what to prescribe. Our health care medical system is abominable. It's abysmal. It is a disaster. You can't get a psychiatrist in this province, which is sad for a lot of young people who may need one. Doctors don't give you more than minutes during their time. They're stretched to the limit. Hospital waiting rooms are stretched to the limit. It is an absolute joke. Every politician and everybody who has a high position promises changes, changes, changes. I have yet to see any changes, and I have lived in this province and lived in this city and born in this city. And I'd like to know, and I'd like to find out how they plan on changing this. That's so, Todd, thank you very much for sharing your concerns and your experiences. Um, certainly our wait times in Emerge uh, at Mackenzie Health are of concern to us, as they are of concern to almost every hospital in the province. It's something that we monitor regularly and we look to improve. Um, today we're talking about Ontario health teams, and our hope and belief uh, in developing this new model is that by delivering more appropriate care to patients, uh, in the community that will actually um, uh, minimize the impact on our emergency departments as patients receive care in more appropriate locations. We're all looking towards working to improve the system and we're certainly looking forward to understanding the perspectives of our community to help us to improve that system. Todd, thank you very much for your question and comments. I do want to remind everyone that if you have a live question that you would like to ask on the Town Hall, you can press 3 on your phone's keypad. We're looking for questions related to how Western York Region Ontario Health Teams can best serve you and your family. We're now going to go to Judy for another live question. Judy, welcome. You're joining us live. Hi, everyone. How easy is it going to be for seniors to access these services? I'm kind of not quite as frustrated as Todd, but close to it when I have called the hospital asking for certain things and it's call one, call two, phone call five, and it's just, uh, I can understand the frustration. So how easy is it going to be for seniors to access these services? Well, our vision is that by working more closely together as part of a coordinated team, we'll be able to serve seniors um, more readily with, with access to services through referrals and um, making sure that, that all partners in the process are aware of what services and programs are available so that uh, we can make sure that seniors are able to get enrolled in programs, receive home care, um, are connected to their primary care physician, whatever it is that they need. Uh, regardless of who that that um, patient or client connects with in the first place. The, uh, just just to add a little bit to that, we're also looking at, um, and, and we don't have it all figured out just yet, but having a, a one way to access in for everyone to know. And so it'll be very easy and very clear, um, and it will be our goal to avoid having the press one, press two, press three. Um, but as much as possible to, um, to have a live answer call for individuals. So that is what our goal is and our hope is to be able to create within this new, um, this new Ontario Health Team. Judy, thank you very much for your question. We're going to go to another live question. This one is going to be from Virginia. Virginia, welcome to the Town Hall. Please go ahead. Thank you. My question is, um, um, I want to know, I live in Richmond Hill. And uh, my hospital is Mackenzie Health on Trench Street. With the new hospital going up in Vaughan, my concern is what is my community going to lose? Uh, folks here do really don't want to travel over to Vaughan for services. So um, thank it's Mary Agnes uh, Wilson here. Thank you for your question uh, about uh, our proposed uh, development of a second site for Mackenzie Health uh, in Vaughan. Um, I, it's a very important topic to us, um, and I want to assure you that we're going to have a second town hall um, hosted by Mackenzie Health to uh, 
support the community in understanding how the surface model and, and delivery is going to uh, going to look like in the future. Uh, today, the focus of our telephone town hall is to collect your input and help to inform the work of our Ontario health team. And so while your question is very important, I'd like to maybe uh, take us in the direction of helping to understand how our Ontario health team is going to improve the care for all of the regions, uh, all of the citizens of Western York Region. Thank you very much, Virginia, for that question. We're going to another question now. It will be from Victoria. Victoria, welcome. You're joining us live. Hello. My question is, I'm wondering what the logic is for separating mental health um, inpatient and outpatient. One, I understand, will be at the McKenzie Health current location in Richmond Hill, and one will be at the Vaughan uh, new location. I was wondering why is it not possible to keep mental health all together, especially since psychiatrists are um, so much in demand, and as Todd said, there is a shortage of psychiatrists and their time is very precious. I don't understand why psychiatrists are going to have to be um, having to commute between one location and the other location because they're going to be having to deal with uh, patients in in hospital and the patients in the out, um, out as outpatients. So again, it's, it's uh, Mary Agnes Wilson here. Thank you very much for your question. Um, I want to reiterate that uh, we're going to have a different, uh, separate town hall uh, hosted by McKenzie Health to talk about the model of care. Um, uh, for both hospitals. Um, we want to focus on the Ontario Health Team discussion here, and we are focusing on care delivered to seniors in our current conversation. Certainly understand your concerns, and uh, they are concerns that we have taken into account. Uh, I can assure you that our doctors will not be commuting between both sites on, on a day. Um, but uh, if we can move to um, answering questions about our Ontario Health Team model, um, we really would like to move the conversation in that direction. Victoria, thank you very much for that question. We have our next live question from Bertha. Bertha, welcome to the Town Hall. You're joining us live. Uh, thank you, and I have a feeling that I'm going to get the same answer as the last time. So first of all, I want to uh, commend the nursing team and the doctors and the physiotherapists who dealt with me. I have a very, very restrictive diabetic diet, and I wasn't able to get the food I needed, and as a result, I lost uh, weight in the hospital, which probably impeded my recovery, and I still haven't been able to gain it back. I uh, This seems like a trivial question uh, when I look at what happened to Todd and so on. Uh, but I understand that Mackenzie Health won awards for their diet, and um, I wasn't able to navigate that situation. However, that's probably a question for another town hall. Thank you. Um, so, again, Bertha, thank you very much for your question. Yes, we can talk specifically about Mackenzie Health at another town hall. Um, I can, uh, although we are talking sort of about the Ontario Health Team, our goal is to really look at the care that we're providing to seniors, including the acute care experience, not just what happens in the community. So understanding your perspectives around the challenges that you had in accessing um, services from a nutrition, nutritionist is extremely important to us um, because that is something that we would uh, we feel strongly about and that we would want to know about so that we can ensure that uh, all of the services are being provided to our uh, our, our uh, patients. Um, and certainly, you know, I can think uh, if maybe our partners want to chime in, the opportunities for supporting people after they go home regarding their uh, wellness and their ability to uh, appropriately provide um, food for themselves. 
It's, uh, it's Elan from SC Health, and um, I think for me one of the really exciting things both as a, as a provider of service and also as a citizen really about the Ontario Health Teams is the ability to connect much more directly with all of our partners. And so, um, you know, had you or should you have been going home receiving home care services or other community, uh, uh, community health services, the connection directly with McKenzie Health would then mean that we knew exactly um, what kind of a specific diet that you needed and could support that or continue that um, once you got home. So it's just a small example, I think, about what the nice connection and communication um, that the Ontario, the spirit of the Ontario Health Team should help us to achieve. Thank you very much, Bertha, for that question. And I know uh, Dr. Nick uh, Vaduris, who uh, has uh, wanted had some more information I think that might be relevant to this topic as well. Hi, Nick Badur is here from Thornhill Family Health Organization, Thornhill Medical Center. I just wanted to add that I've been hearing a lot of these questions coming about seniors and frail seniors and the troubles that they've been having in the system. And I just wanted to spend a little bit of time if I could to just explain how I think that the Ontario Health Team and what is being proposed by the Ontario government will help people. So first of all, let's, find, let's start by why we're concentrating on seniors. And the reason why we're talking about seniors is that old equals sick. The older you get, the sicker you're going to be. And therefore, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for us to spend a lot of time on young, healthy people. We want to really look at the people in our community who are frail and are vulnerable. And one of the other facts that we know is that never in history have people been living as long as they do right now. We have, as many of you know, fantastic seniors who are traveling around the world in their 90s, and there's many of these people who are doing very, very well. Unfortunately, this huge number of elderly people, there is a huge subset that we, although we've increased their length of life, we haven't increased their quality of life. And because of that, they are constantly ill, they have lots of problems that they have to take care of, and they often end up in our emergency departments, in fact, overwhelming all of our services. This is a problem that is ex existent in all of the countries that are advanced in the world, and in fact, it's one of the most fascinating aspects of medicine. So as a primary care provider, I can tell you that we are concentrating all of our efforts in this Ontario Health Team to these seniors to try to take care of them. Because as many of you said in the phone calls, it's very difficult to know exactly where to go and what to do. So as a family practitioner in a big medical group in Thornhill, I look at it as our role is to try to take these people and to help them in their care. And that involves, first of all, just being there and seeing them and identifying what the problem is. Then being able to refer them to the specialist. That's a complex process in itself. Getting them to have all the tests that they need, such as an echocardiogram or an ultrasound or a stress test. How do we do that? And then for all the people who are then at home and having problems, how do we initiate all of home care, all of chats, all of Meals on Wheels? How do we get this all coordinated? And for that unfortunate segment of our society that requires palliative care, how do we figure out what to best take care of these people at home, in the office, in the hospital, in a palliative care center such as Hill House or Hospice Vaughan? How do we do all of this? So we have a lot of different players involved in this whole process, and it's a very complex process. And what Ontario health teams are designed to do is allow all these various different moving parts to move together better, to be more seamless, to take care of all these people who require our care and have never before had to be able to deal with all these issues in the past. We have retirement homes. We have long-term care homes. How do we get people into them? How do we know when they're in one facility but need to go to the other facility? All of this will be what Ontario Health Teams tackle. And all of this will allow us, we hope, to have either better care, seamless care, and with better care and seamless care, help save us more money to put into more of the resources that all the callers have been calling that's saying that they wish that they had. Hi, it's Elaine 
from Hill House Hospice and uh, Vaughn Hospice. Again, I want to thank you all for taking the time to share your experiences and your ideas related to the coordination of your health and social well-being. We're really excited. We're hoping to improve access to all these services with all the partners that make up the Ontario Health Team, and we're very committed to working together to improve your health care. And we're excited to have been selected one of the few uh, Ontario health teams to move forward into the next phase and to becoming the first Ontario health team in Ontario. Thank you, uh, Elaine. Um, now I'll take some more questions from the members of our community on the call. Eric? We have our next live question coming up. It's going to be from Penny. Penny, welcome to the Town Hall. You're joining us live. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, I have a, actually I have a couple of questions, but my one first question is health team, the Southwest Health Team. How, because my experience has been that it's been very difficult when you go to see your GP or a specialist, they only want to deal with one little piece of you. And once you get to be a senior, you really need somebody to be looking at you holistically as to how it's going to impact. So I'm just interested in the health team. How are they going to manage that? And how, uh, who would be the staff person that would be kind of providing the direction or the care? And the other question I have, I'm sorry, but uh, how can I plan for the future? My husband is 10 years older than I am, and I'm trying to figure out if, because I rely on him a lot for assistance, how can I plan for the future? Because it's very difficult in our with with our healthcare system currently to do that. Okay, so Nick Laduris here again, the family practitioner in the room. In answer to your first question, I think whether we have Ontario health teams or not. Uh, not all GPs are created equally, and if your GP is really only concentrating on one little small part of you, for whatever reason, time constraints, financial constraints, I don't think that they're probably doing as good a job as they could do. Certainly in our office, what we try to do, and in many, many GPs across the community, we do take the entire patient into account because we have to deal with the entire patient. And I have to tell you, I have uh, 30 people over the age of 90 who are males and 30 people who are over the age of 90 who are females, and it's impossible to just deal with one thing. When they walk into the office, it's like five, six, seven different things. And if you don't be, are not able to do all of that, then you know you're you're ignoring certain parts of the patient. So, for example, if you've got uh, your car and the mechanic's only looking at one little small part of it, it's not going to be a very good fixed job. So I think you have to look at the family practitioner and the family practitioner's office that you have first. Then beyond that, in terms of Ontario health teams, the whole idea is that by having all of these other groups who are sitting around the table with me, that you are able to look with the patient more holistically and you are able to look at the patient in a way that will deal with all the multifactorial processes that are going on with them. In terms of your question of how do we plan for this? I do this all the time. And in fact, one of the ways that we do it and it's being taught to a lot of GPs and it happens in our community is that you do a risk assessment on all of your patients. If you're a 25 year old female, you're not really thinking about her becoming demented, incapacitated, requiring home care, all of these things. But if I have a 75 year old male who is got a number of diseases and I say to myself, there's one or two things that could go wrong with this patient that would result in them being in a chronic facility, then I certainly talk to them and I talk to all their family members to get ready. Getting ready means simple, basic stuff. Do you have a will? Do you have a power of attorney for personal care? Do you have a power of attorney for financial care? Do you have insurance? Do you have different things from your employer or from the government that will allow you to survive should you hit a rocky road? Do you have a house that you can sell for money? Do you have family members who live here or somewhere in the, in the distance? There's numerous questions that all come together. So we do pay attention to these people and we do know how to take care of them. And the example that I always give that I'll never forget is I had a 
75-year-old man who had diabetes. He had virtually every single possible problem that you can imagine, including amputations, including all sorts of times when he went to a coma. And his wife was 10 years younger, and she was 65 and completely healthy. So the entire family devoted their time to taking care of this 75-year-old man. And one morning, the 65-year-old woman wa woke up and dropped dead of a heart attack. So they had no one to take care of the 75-year-old man, and all the planning had been kind of not the appropriate way. So the way I would say to it is that you've got to just involve your family practitioner, you've got to involve your family, you've got to involve all these other people who will be part of this Ontario Health Team so as to plan and to get ready. And then the final proviso I'll say is you can plan forever in a day, but you might not know exactly what ends up happening to you. Penny, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Joseph Glitze from uh, Universal Care, representing residential and long-term care. So uh, Dr. Viduris uh, gave a, a, a very detailed assessment of uh, different opportunities, and I just want to reinforce one of his points is that the uh, Ontario Health Teams, the idea is to share information, and uh, having, uh, you know, working through your GP um, to support him or her in terms of the different services that you can access. So it's about breaking down silos and looking at the different opportunities, whether it's care that you require uh, at home, whether you require that uh, care and service in the hospital, or if uh, long-term care or uh, retirement home uh, is uh, something that's more suitable. So I thank you for your question. It's uh, a very important one. Penny, it's it's Elaine from uh, Hill House Hospice. One, one other thing you might want to discuss with your husband and family is an advanced care plan. So you may want to talk about whether or not uh, you would want cardiac resuscitation, whether you would want artificial feeding or artificial hydration. Those are key things that you want to plan in advance and to know each other's uh, wishes. The other thing I just uh, wanted to mention, you can... Uh, connect if you had Meals on Wheels visiting you and the volunteer came in and we're hoping that if you mention to the volunteer you're have, having trouble getting out to the uh, grocery store that, that the volunteer delivering the Meals on Wheels could refer to chats and then chats could get someone and help you. So we're, that's how we're trying to connect things. There's services in the community that can refer to other services and help connect you so it's seamless. Um, it's not just telling you that you here's a phone number and call to see if you can get help. Penny, thank you very much for that question. Now, the next question is actually a question that we have for the panelists, uh, Christina from Chats and Elaine from Hill House. What are some of the challenges caregivers often face when caring for an ill relative, and how can the Ontario Health Team model help with those challenges? Eric, that's an excellent question. It's Christina Bazanz from Chats here. Um, we know that many caregivers, um, you know, are caught in situations where, you know, they may have uh, families to care for and then suddenly they have um, elderly parents or a spouse or a relative. And one of the biggest difficulties is that, that the caregivers in trying to um, coordinate medical appointments and, and uh, um, follow all the needs that they have for their loved ones, they get very burdened and, and overwhelmed. And sometimes that affects their health. So just as the previous uh, caller was talking about, um, you know, concerns about what happens if, if something should happen to her husband, you know, we're cognizant that caregivers themselves can be at risk of having health difficulties if, if they aren't able to, to cope and manage with the very complex sometimes demands of, of caring for a loved one. Organizations like CHATS and, and Hill House, and I'll let um, um, Elaine speak to that, offer a number of programs to support caregivers, to help them uh, cope with the situation that they face, to help relieve them of some of the, the challenges and burdens that they may have, uh, provide them with education about things like advanced care planning, wills and estates, um, what it means to live with somebody who has dementia. And there's a number of, of programs and services that are available for caregivers in that respect. 
And that would be very much uh, an integrated part of the Ontario Health Team to ensure that we're not just dealing with the patient, but we're also dealing with and, and supporting the family caregiver as a partner in, in the, um, the process and, and journey of the patient themselves. So those are just some of the issues and concerns. loved one to spend time in an adult day program or to have a personal support worker come into the home for a couple of hours to relieve the family caregiver to, so that they can go out and get their hair done or nails done or just spend time on themselves and, and their own wellness. So there's a number of things that services and programs that, that are currently available and by coordinating better with one another in the Ontario Health Team, we'll be able to um, support both the patient and the family caregiver in um, addressing the issues, but also to supporting them with the programs that are available. I think one of the, the challenges seen from Hill House and uh, Hospice Salon, one of the challenges for caregivers, for someone who's uh, palliative, it's very emotional for the patient, the caregiver, and the family. And sometimes they need just a, a bit of respite uh, we often hear, you know, I promise to keep my loved one at home, and we always we try to do that the best we can, but sometimes it's best that if you can let nurses provide the care and you can become the husband, the wife, the son, and the daughter again, something that caregivers can't be or, uh, or uh, health professionals can't be. So coming to Hill House, which is a home-like environment, not a hospital-like environment, really relieves um, family members and caregivers. And Hospice Bond also provides wonderful programs for patients. You know, when you have a heavy care burden at home, you're very lonely and you don't have time for yourself. And places like Hospice Bond that can provide wellness programs and support allow you to be yourself while being a caregiver. They also provide grief counseling for caregivers. So. Um, there's a real wraparound services uh, for palliative care, both residential and visiting here. And we hope that our partners in the community will easily transfer care to some of these organizations and not having the caregiver to repeat everything all over again, but there's a fluid transfer of care. And I just wanted to add, Nick Waduris here, family practice. When you ask the biggest question, when you ask what the biggest concern is for caregivers, the answer quite simply is burnout. Mm -hmm. They just cannot cope long term with constantly taking care of these uh, patients. And one of the sayings in family practice is you want to not make it so that one patient becomes two patients, which is the caregiver taking care of the patient. And listening to Christina and all the other people around the table, there's not a lot of people who even understand that a lot of these services exist and are there. And a family practitioner working in closer contact with all the other people around this table who know all the various different tricks and all the different things that you can do to make a patient and a caregiver feel better, that's what the whole idea of an Ontario Health Team is for, is to get all these people working together in a better way. So what they've all said is terrific. My job is just to make sure that you don't get burnt out and sick in the process. Thank you very much uh, for those comments. Now, we have uh, uh, Mary Agnes. I know you just wanted to do a quick recap of, of where we're at in the event at the moment. Thank you, uh, Eric. Again, we want to thank everyone for taking the time to join us on this call. We are very excited to tell you about uh, the new Ontario Health Team model uh, that we will aim to coordinate all the patients' care needs across our region. The 11 partners that make up the Western York Region Ontario Health Team are on this call, and we're committed to working together as one cohesive team to deliver health care and social services to patients. The formalization of this existing partnership is part of the province's uh, process to introduce Ontario Health Teams across uh, Ontario. We're excited to have been chosen to move to the next phase of approvals and becoming one of the first health teams in Ontario. Um, once again, I'd like to introduce the partners that are on this call. We have Christina Vizans, 
CEO from CHAPS, representing Home and Community Services. Helene Lacroix, VP, Clinical Innovation, St. Elizabeth Health, representing Home Care Services. Elaine Walsh, a board member from Hill House Hospice, representing Hospice and Palliative Care Services. Dr. Nick Verduras, Primary Care Physician at the Thornhill Village Family Health Organization. And Joseph Galizia, President and CEO of Universal Care, representing Long-Term Care and Residential Care. Thank you very much, Mary Agnes. Now, I know that we have a, uh, a segment that we're going to go to Helene from SE Health on virtual care. Helene, welcome. Thank you, Eric. Um, so uh, as Eric mentioned, I want to move us on to the topic of virtual care now, which is an important element of the Ontario health teams as we move forward. So with advances in technology, the healthcare community has been making strides in incorporating smart technologies into how we deliver care. The introduction of Ontario Health Teams aims to provide choices in how you access care and intends to offer virtual care options such as telephone, email, electronic booking, remote monitoring, and video consultations. Eric, can we go to our next polling question? We do have another polling question ready to go, and for everyone joining us on the line, you can indicate your response using your touchtone phone. Uh, we want to hear from you. On a scale of one to five, how comfortable are you in using a phone, computer, or tablet to have a virtual, assist, uh, virtual visit with your care team, such as a physician, nurse, or specialist? Press one if you are not comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. Press two if you are minimally comfortable to using technology to have a virtual visit. Press 3 if you are somewhat comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. Press 4 if you are very comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. And press 5 if you are extremely comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. So again, on a scale of 1 to 5, how comfortable are you in using a phone, computer, or tablet to have a virtual visit with your care team, such as a physician, nurse, or specialist? Press 1 if you are not comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. Press 2 if you are minimally comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. Press 3 if you are somewhat comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. Press 4 if you are very comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. And press 5 if you are extremely comfortable using technology to have a virtual visit. We have our next live question now coming up from Georgina. Georgina, welcome. You're joining us live. Hi, thank you for this opportunity, and I love uh, listening to everybody's input. I'm actually the client care uh, coordinator, visiting and wellness for Hope House Community Hospice. And what we do is we have trained, professionally trained and supported volunteers who offer non-medical in-home support to anyone living with a life-threatening illness, not necessarily palliative, uh, for example, ALS, which could be a prognosis of um, maybe four or five years. We also have day hospice for these people where they um, can come and spend the morning. And again, that leads into our caregivers, which gives them the caregiver support um, where they have uh, one day a week or two days a week where their loved ones can come to a group. Um, so I just, it's interesting. There's five community hospices, and I just haven't heard. Um, anything about how we can actually go in. 35 years, we actually service, I should tell you, Hope House Community Hospice was formerly Hospice, King, Aurora, and Richmond Hill. So um, it's now, because of the big area, it's Hope House Community Hospice. And again, it's wellness programs, it's caregiver programs, in-home visiting for palliative, as, um, as well as the hospital. So we do visit on a weekly basis at uh, Mackenzie Health, on the unit. So my question actually is, uh, looking into the Ontario Health Team, how will community hospice, hospices be involved? Hi, Georgina. It's Elaine from Hill House. You and I have had several conversations. Uh, you know, you've had patients at Hill House. Um, so Hospice Vaughan is involved. We're looking at Western um, York Region, and we work closely with them. And uh, I know at Hill House, when patients are admitted, the clinical nurse specialist on her report will always tell us if a visiting hospice is involved, and we always make contact with the visiting hospice to welcome the volunteers to come and visit their patients. 
at our hospice and also when a patient passes away, we always inform um, the, the visiting hospice volunteers that someone has passed away so they can then support the family and caregivers. Hi, it's Christina here. I'd just like to um, point out as well that although there are 11 partners around the table at this point in time, um, we had to start somewhere, but that doesn't preclude the fact that there are many other uh, community agencies and, and other organizations that are providing invaluable support and care to, to seniors and others in our communities. And ultimately, that is the goal of the Ontario Health Team, will be to, to look at how do we engage um, the relevant and, and important community services and, and healthcare services that are already in our community so that we're not, um, we're not duplicating services, but that we're also able to refer people to uh, places where they can get the support they need regardless of, of where they live. Georgina, thank you very much for your question. We're going to do another survey question uh, for everyone joining us on the line. So again, using your touchtone phone, you can indicate your response. If options were available for you to use a phone, computer, or tablet to have a virtual visit with your, health, uh, with your care team, how likely would you be to use these options to meet with your care team? Press 1 if you are not likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 2 if you are a little likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 3 if you are somewhat likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 4 if you are very likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 5 if you are extremely likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. So again, if options were available for you to use a phone, computer, or tablet to have a visit, a virtual visit with your care team, how likely would you be to use these options to meet with your care team? Press 1 if you are not likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 2 if you are a little likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 3 if you are somewhat likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 4 if you are very likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Press 5 if you are extremely likely to use virtual tools to meet with your care team. Now we have another segment. This one is from Helene uh, regarding managing your own chronic health conditions. Helene, welcome. Thank you, Eric. So I want now to uh, draw your attention to another important element of our uh, element of care uh, for Ontario Health Team, and that is managing your own chronic health condition. One of our goals as an Ontario Health Team will be to ensure that your care team provides you with the right information and tools to support you in managing your care once you leave the hospital or your doctor's office and are recovering at home. Under the Ontario Health Team model, you will be provided information on your condition and how you can manage your health. You will also be able to access your health record digitally. Eric, can we go over our final polling question? We can. We have another polling question coming up right now. And uh, again, using your touchstone phone, you can indicate your response. How likely are you to access your health records or education materials electronically? Press 1 if you are not likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 2 if you are a little likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 3 if you are somewhat likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 4 if you are very likely to access records or materials electronically. And press 5 if you are extremely likely to access records or materials electronically. So again, how likely are you to access your health records or education materials electronically? Press 1 if you are not likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 2 if you are a little likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 3 if you are somewhat likely to access records or materials electronically. Press 4 if you are very likely to access records or materials electronically. And press 5 if you are extremely likely to access records or materials electronically. Now we're going to tally those survey results. And we actually have another survey question we're going to do right away. So again, using your touchstone phone, you can indicate your response. Given what you've learned about the Western York Region Ontario Health Team on this call, to what extent would you be interested in benefiting from this new way of delivering care locally in our community? Press 1 if you are not interested in the benefits. Press 2 if you are a little interested in the benefits. Press 3 if you are somewhat interested in the benefits. 
press 4 if you are very interested in the benefits, and press 5 if you are extremely interested in the benefits. So given what you've learned about the Western York Region Ontario Health Team on this call, to what extent would you be interested in benefiting from this new way of delivering care locally in our community? Press 1 if you are not interested in the benefits. Press 2 if you are a little interested in the benefits. Press 3 if you are somewhat interested in the benefits. Press 4 if you are very interested in the benefits. And press 5 if you are extremely interested in the benefits. Now we have another open uh, question topic for the audience member, and we want to know what is the biggest challenge that prevents you from being able to manage your care at home? And of course, if you have a live question, you can press three on your phone's keypad at any time over the course of the town hall, and someone will take your name and place you in the question queue. So again, if you have a live question you would like to ask, you can do so by pressing three on your phone's keypad. And we, of course, are looking for questions related to how Western York Region, uh, Western York Region Ontario Health Teams can best serve you and your family. And now we do have another topic for the panel that I'm just going to uh, introduce, and it's understanding that we are in the early days of planning. What are you most proud of as uh, an Ontario health team that will improve how care is delivered for patients, families, and caregivers in our region? Um, thank you for that. Uh, it's uh, Joseph uh, Galizia from uh, Universal Care. I think what's uh, uh, really beneficial about this process is many of us uh, have a uh, very close working relationship with uh, Mackenzie Health. And this process and, uh, and the creation of, these, of this team uh, allows uh, people like myself to get to know some of the uh, other organizations that have been providing exceptional uh, uh, care and services uh, in the community, in the hospital, in other settings. And so what I'm proud of is that how we've come together so quickly to work uh, uh, for the benefit of uh, providing uh, the appropriate care and services uh, in, uh, in our community. And it's Elen from SC Health. I'd like to echo that actually and also perhaps just add that I'm also really proud of the fact that we're having events like tonight and making sure that we get feedback from our local community and from our patients and clients that receive care and services today and that collectively we're planning and, and creating a system of care that will actually service uh, this area in the best way possible. It's Christina Bazanz and, and uh, you know, I echo what's been said, the, the partnership has been very important and, and very uh, beneficial for us to be talking and sharing information. But I think the thing I'm most proud of and I think has been one of the the beneficial elements of getting together as an Ontario health team is that we're working together to make sure that we're addressing not just health care but social care needs of the people who live in our community. Um, you know, we can we can talk about um, acute care and and patients, but oftentimes the the issues that affect citizens and residents in our communities may not have anything to do specifically with with a, a health issue or a disease, but may be something like um, being soci socially isolated from other people, being unable to um, get to appointments or, or grocery shop because there's no access to transportation. Housing is a problem for, for some people. So I think that that for me, one of the real benefits as well as the ones that have been mentioned is the fact that we're acknowledging and we're working together to not just address healthcare concerns and issues of people in our community, but also the social care needs. We have another live question now coming up from Elaine. Elaine, you're joining us live on the line. Please go ahead with your question. Thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. One of them is, um, uh, how do you get an idea? We, there's nowhere you can go to say what are these um, services that are available. Um, you hear about them, you know, somebody, I've got a, a brother who's Down syndrome and I understand he's getting hit care in the house now. but. I don't know how you get connected to these or what they are. We also have another problem that is very, um, I'm 73, so I'm coming up on things that I'm having trouble with my memory and stuff. But the other thing is that we have a lot of children who, about 20 years ago, were seriously harmed 
by vaccines. And now we have we have one we have two in the house. One's 26. We have to look after that person every day. And you're not talking about anything like that. How are we going to get support for this person? We're getting older now, and we have spent I have spent 20 years looking after this grandson of mine. And what's going to happen to them? You you don't seem to be talking about them today, only the seniors. And this is another whole issue. And there's so many of them around, and they don't think like normal people. They don't act like normal people. And they need a lot of constant care. Have you got any plans for them, too? So I have the two questions. How do we know what's available for us as seniors? Um, Because we never know. and, And we go to our doctors, and they don't tell us. And then, you know, is there some place we can go and look and see what these services are? And the other one is, what are you doing about the young people who are still experiencing terrible uh, complications from those vaccines that were forced on them? Okay, so first of all, Nick Ladeur is here again, the family practitioner. I think that uh, the first and foremost thing for any type of care in my mind in the community is to get a good family practitioner who can tell you what all these services are. Uh, You seem to have not had a very good experience, and I'm sorry about that, but certainly in our office and in most of the offices in York Region, and Southwest York Region, we serve as what we call the gateway to all the other services that are available. If you are to go on trial, you're never going to figure it out unless you have a good lawyer. If you're trying to navigate the healthcare system, you're never going to figure it out unless you have a good general practitioner. So I think the first thing is that you should go to your family practitioner and if you have a certain question about a frail senior or someone else in your family, you should be able to ask them what are the services available and they should be able to tell you what they are or to link you up with someone who knows what they are. So I think the answer to the first question is your family practitioner should know the best, should be the person who's approached first and should be able to provide you with that information. In terms of the second question, uh, I'm very sorry for the fact that you've had uh, children who have had adverse effects from medical treatment. And yes, we have not really talked about that today because really we only have a mandate to be involved with the seniors and the frail seniors and that's why we talked about them today. We in no way are trying to ignore your pain and suffering or the concerns that you have with these other members. It's just not that we have that involved. So uh, please don't take it as we're not concerned about it. It's just not what the mandate of Ontario Health Team is. Thank you. It's Yvonne from SC Health again. And um, I want to really recognize that access to information and what kind of resources is definitely a challenge. We've heard it a couple of times already on the call today. I just want to reiterate that, not that we know exactly how we're going to do this yet, but it is our it is our desire to have that, you know, one way to get into the healthcare system and get your questions answered. So that one number to call is definitely um, part of our on, on our roadmap of what we want to do. Um, and also, just want to um, clarify also the our, for sure our mandate um, is seniors for year one. Um, moving towards an Ontario Health Team is is going to be a journey. And, um, and we decided initially to start with looking at frail seniors um, during our first year um, together as a group. Should we, should we move forward to the next step? Um, we're going to use everything that we learned during that first year um, to apply it and to, and to grow and to actually then move what we've learned um, to all of the citizens of, of, the, of the region. And so it, it isn't at the, at the expense of, of young people, of, of babies or anything like that. We will move to include everybody. We're just, we just have to start in one place. And we decided that we would start with seniors. Elaine, thank you very much for your question for the panel. We have another live question now coming up from Lee. Lee, welcome. You're joining us live. Thank you. Actually, it's refreshing. Um, Everything I've heard from the panel tonight, I think it's great that the different bodies are coming together and coordinating the services. I have a 95-year-old mom that is bedridden at home and uh, currently take advantage of uh, for uh, 16 or 14 hours of CCAC care and uh, home care who goes in and does her uh, takes her blood work for INR. So it's amazing and it's fantastic. I guess my question is, um, I'm very happy to hear that the, the team has come together and that, that this team has been formed. 
Um, I'm curious to understand, when you are going through your discussions and talking about the services that you're going to make available to, to currently the seniors, how are you going to come to consensus, and what are we look, looking at in terms of a timeline? Well, <laughs> so great questions. Um, in terms of uh, the process that we're undertaking to um, develop the program, uh, as I think we said earlier, uh, we submitted our uh, proposal in the summer. Uh, we were selected as one of the 31 uh, organizations or, or groups to move forward to uh, application. We are currently in the process of developing uh, the model of care, focusing, as we said, on frail uh, and complex seniors. Our timeline for developing the proposal and final submission is October the 9th, and then we look forward to hearing the outcome of our submission from the Ministry of Health um, with, with, with what we hope will be a green light to move forward. I just um, having said that, um, we are uh, encouraged by the fact that we Although we had existing relationships, coming together as a team has allowed us to um, start to uh, dialogue and talk about how we can work together better, regardless of, of our status of becoming an Ontario health team. Um, it really has uh, been quite refreshing to have everyone around the table together to talk about how we can deliver care uh, in a much more uh, efficient and effective way. And one of the, there are many components to the model, um, but certainly the ability to have those warm handoffs between care providers, between the hospital, the community, um, primary care, uh, long-term care, um, that would be essential and, and a very significant key to the success of this model. And I just wanted to add Nick Duris here again that I don't think that it should be taken that none of us were ever talking to each other before this Ontario Health team ever started. I think all of us know of all of each other around the room and have been working uh, very, very well for a lot of patients. And I think we have to keep that in mind that there are many, many frail seniors who do get excellent care in the current system that we have. The trick is that we want to make it even better, and that's why this whole Ontario Health team was put together. And as Joseph mentioned, being able to come together, being able to share things will allow us to work better. So it's really a matter of improving incrementally and exponentially what we already have that the whole process of an Ontario Health team is. And that's what the end goal is. It's Elaine here from uh, Hill House Hospice. I just uh, wanted to share with you that we had a meeting just the other day looking at how we were going to collaborate together. and. We're all very committed to a consensus model of uh, decision making. So um, I'm pretty sure we're all very committed to this model and to providing the best of health care. So I'm sure um, we're going to do it by consensus. I ha just have that for you. Um, Lee, it's uh, Joseph uh, uh, from uh, Universal Care, and uh, you raised a, a very important question. I think what uh, what excites us is that we of our common shared values in order uh, to provide the best care possible in a location that's uh, most appropriate. And what's different with the Ontario Health Team uh, compared to other uh, systems and organizations set up by the government is that we're in this as equal partners and so uh, the idea is, is to break down any silos that exist, encourage more uh, organizations and partners to be a part of uh, the team and year after year look at new goals and uh, rebuild the system based on what Dr. Verdura said, a very strong foundation. So uh, thank you so much for that question. Lee, thank you much for the question. We have from Avajit. Avajit, welcome. You're joining us live. Uh, thanks so much. Um, I just wanted to ask a question. Actually, I'm a resident of Vaughan. I work in planning for Mount Sinai, and I'm also I had the pleasure of uh, working closely with Chas as a board member. I wanted to take this conference call with my mom and dad, and I found that whenever we have poll questions regarding adoption of tech tools, I find I gravitating towards five and up, above, whereas my parents, who are quite tech-friendly, 
but still gravitating towards a one, a maximum two. So I wanted to know when we talk about adoption of technology, is there a focal point or a focus group we are thinking about as well? Is the focus group the caregiver, which in my case would be someone like myself, or is it also the actual patient? Well, uh, Nick Badurisher can sort of answer some of that. We have been completely electronic medical record now for over 10 years. We are completely linked with McKenzie Health Hospital and get all the reports immediately. Our patients can uh, access all their records online. They can email us. They can make an appointment online. They can do all of these technical things that you're talking about. But in answer to your question, what I find is that you have to just be able to provide all the various different methods of communication for all of the patients and that it has to be patient-oriented. There are some people who will just never make an appointment online. They are going to need a phone. There are some people who just never make an appointment on the phone. They need to be online. There are some people who want to come into the room and have me explain their entire hospital visit, which occurred a day ago, and there's others who've already accessed it online, have gone on Dr. Google, and are coming in and telling me what they think needs to happen next. So it has to be the patient. It has to be all the providers. I think the key thing is integrating it better and better all the time. I envisioned a day when I'll be able to send electronic communication to Hill House or to Chats or to Home Care or to anybody else that I want and get things done as an added avenue to what we have already. I think that we have to look at it as giving everybody the choices that they need to make. In your family, as you described, you have some members who like it, some people who don't. I've given up trying to predict who's going to be emailing me and who's going to be calling me. The important thing is to be able to have all of this. And numerous, numerous studies show that computers will never replace doctors, at least that's what I think and many studies show, but what they will be doing is they will be the person that is there doing some of the stuff with the doctor. In other words, computers can already look at the skin and tell you whether you've got a cancer or not better than virtually any doctor can do. But then once the computer tells you that information, there's hardly anybody that I know who wants to listen to that computer. They want to ask me as the physician, what is the significance of what the computer has found? So I think you're going to have this mix and match. Nobody really knows exactly how it's going to all work out. But I think that it's safe to say that nobody is looking at it as just patient-centric or doctor-centric. We're looking at it as an entire network that is supplanted already on a network that we already have and giving everybody the complete opportunity to have all the choice that they need to make the right decisions for themselves. And it's in, um from SC Health. I think uh, we, we have in our organization uh, also dabbled a little bit in tele telehome care and telemonitoring. And in our case, um, we, there definitely is sort of a range of, of, of uh, how, how patients accept or don't accept uh, the technology. And in our situation, to, to answer your question, um, we definitely encourage caregivers of, of, um, of patients or clients to participate or to use the technology on behalf of their loved one. It helps, with their permission, of course, it helps them be really involved in care and, you know, fully understand what's happening and sort of get a first-hand sort of glance at, um, at how their, their, the health of their loved one is progressing. So I think that when we move forward with technology, we absolutely do need to be um, pretty flexible in terms of how we use it to enable health. Avajit, thank you very much for that question. Now, Mary Agnes, we have just about reached the end of the event. With the last couple of minutes, did you want to share a few final thoughts or concluding remarks with the listeners from yourself and the panel? Thank you, Eric. Uh, again, I want to thank everyone who took the time out of their evening to join us on this special telephone town hall. Your feedback and insights have been informative. It will certainly help us uh, as we finalize our full submission to the government in early October. If you didn't get a chance to talk to us this evening, please be sure to reach out and let us know what you think. We'll continue to keep you informed as we move through the process, and as always, we're committed to delivering the best health care and social services possible to the communities we serve. Thank you again to everyone for joining us on this evening, uh, on the town hall this evening. If you still have any questions or any feedback that you would like to share with Mary Agnes and the team, you can do so by emailing them to 
public affairs at mckenziehealth.ca or you can stay on the line where you'll be able to leave a message once the town hall has closed. So again, please leave your name and number for us to get back to you. And again, as I mentioned, just a reminder, you can email and any questions and feedback to us at public affairs at mckenziehealth.ca or stay on the line once the town hall has finished, you'll have a chance to leave a message at the conclusion uh, and please leave your name and phone number for us to get back uh, to you. Please remember uh, to re include your name and phone number. Thank you again to everyone for joining us this evening and have a great night.